Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at simulations and predictions. We're going to answer the question, what are simulations and how can I use probability to make predictions? So sometimes experimental data can be difficult to collect. So simulation can be used to model the real world event. And then the probability of the real world experiment can be predicted by doing an easier experiment with a similar theoretical probability. So instead of conducting a massive experiment, we are just gonna do a simulation with a smaller amount of things so that we can model that probability. The important thing is simulations need to have the same total outcome as the actual event. So let's look at an example of some simulations. So number one says give an example of an experiment that could be used to simulate the likelihood of having a boy or a, go a girl. So that means that there are two total outcomes. So we would need something that would be easy to use that also had two total outcomes, such as flipping a two-sided coin. So flipping a two-sided coin, that also has two total outcomes. So that could model the likelihood of having a boy or a girl, which also has two total outcomes. Okay, then two says give an example of an experiment that could be used to simulate randomly selecting a white sock out of a drawer with six socks in it. So six socks in it means that we would have six total outcomes. And randomly selecting one sock out of the six total socks, the probability would be one out of six. So we need something that would have a similar probability to that, such as a spinner divided into six equal parts. Each of the equal parts would also have a one out of six probability. Okay, let's look at number three. It says, Jay chooses one of four breads and one of six vegetables to eat each week at the farmer's market. Which simulation could he use to represent his choices? So we are gonna have one of four breads. So that part is gonna have four total outcomes and one of six vegetables. So that part is going to have six total outcomes. So we need two things one that represents four total outcomes and one that represents six total outcomes. So let's look at A, it says spin a spinner with equal sections labeled A through J. Um, that would only be six total outcomes, so it would model the six vegetables but not the four breads. Let's look at B, it says flip a coin 10 times. So we're not doing one out of 10 in total, we're doing one out of four and then one out of six, so that would not work. Let's look at C. It says roll a six-sided die. So that part would have the six total outcomes like the six vegetables. And spin a spinner with equal sections labeled sections A through D. That would have four total outcomes like the four breads. So that one could work. Let's read through answer choice D just to make sure it's not better. D says draw a card from a stack of three blue cards and four red cards. Well, the four red cards would match the four breads, but the three blue cards would not match the six vegetables, so that one is not going to work. So the best answer choice here is going to be C. Okay, now let's talk about predictions. So probability can be used to make predictions for future events by setting up a proportion with the probability of the predicted favorable outcomes to predict the total outcome. Then we will solve the proportion using cross products. So basically, we will write the probability, the favorable out of the total, and then we can use it to either predict the total or predict the favorable total um, by cross multiplying. So four says, predict how many times you would roll a six on a die that was already rolled 120 times. So rolling a six on a die, that probability is one out of six. And the total on the experiment was 120. So that's gonna go on the bottom. And I don't know how many times it was rolled. 
So now I can use the probability to predict the um, favorable by cross multiplying this proportion. So one times 20 is 120, and then six times x is six x, and then we divide by six, and 120 divided by six is 20. So the favorable number of times that that um, dice rolled on a six was 20 times. Okay, let's look at five. A bag of marbles contains six marbles and four yellow marbles. If you draw 600 times, replacing the marble each time, about how many yellow marbles can you expect to draw? So there are six purple marbles and four yellow marbles, which means there are 10 marbles in total. And we're talking about the yellow marbles and there were four yellow marbles. And we want to know how many times would you expect to draw yellow out of 600. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify this fraction here, um, just to make these numbers a little bit easier to work with. So four out of 10 simplifies to two out of five equals x out of 600. Okay, now I'm gonna cross multiply this to solve. So two times 600 is 1200. And then five times X is five X. And I would divide by five and 1200 divided by five is 240. So we would expect them to draw a yellow marble 240 times. Okay, let's look at number six. It says Lily has a bag containing 35 letter tiles. She selects a tile without looking and then replaces it. Predict how many consonant tiles there are in a bag if she pulls three consonant tiles and four vowel tiles. So this time they did a little experiment with the bag and we're gonna use the experimental probability to predict how many are actually in there, how many consonant tiles are in there. Um, so in her experiment, it looks like she pulled seven tiles in total and three of them were consonant tiles. And we want to know out of the 35 tiles, how many of them would be consonants based on that. So now I can solve this proportion with cross multiplication. Three times 35 is 105. And seven times X is seven X. And then we divide by seven and 105 divided by seven is 15. So that means we would expect 15 of the tiles to be consonants. Let's look at seven, a school cafeteria surveyed a random sample of students to determine what ice cream flavor they prefer. Based on the results, how many of the 170 students can be expected to prefer chocolate ice cream? So here is the survey. Let's figure out how many people they surveyed in total by adding these together and we get 34. And we want to know how many are expected to prefer chocolate. Well, in the survey, 20 out of the 34 preferred chocolate. And we want to know how many out of the 170 would we expect to prefer chocolate based on that. So before I cross multiply, I am going to simplify this fraction. Both of these numbers are divisible by two. So that will simplify to 10 over 17 equals X over 170. And I'm gonna cross multiply 10 times 17 is 1700 and then 17 times x is 17x and we would divide by 17 and we would get 100. So we would expect 100 students out of the 170 to prefer chocolate based on that survey. All right, last one based on a previous sales at Based on previous sales at an electronic store, 30% of customers purchase video games. If 210 people visited the store during lunch on Monday, predict how many video games were sold. So they gave us a percent here, 30% of customers purchase video games. So I can write that as a ratio, 30 out of 100, because percents are out of 100. And I can use that to predict how many of the 210 people would be expected to buy video games. I'm just going to simplify this fraction before I cross multiply. 30 over 100 could simplify to 3 over 10. 
and then equals x over 210. And now that proportion is just a little bit easier to work with. So 3 times 210 would be 630. And then 10 times x is 10x. And then I would divide by 10 and get 63 equals x. So out of the 210 customers, we would expect 63 of them to purchase video games. And then the last one says, if 180 video games were sold on Friday, predict how many people in total visited the store on Friday. So we know that the ratio for the people who purchase video games is three over 10. I'm gonna go ahead and use that simplified one. Sorry, three over 10. And it says, if 180 video games were sold on Friday, predict how many people in total visited the store on Friday. So this time I'm trying to find the total. They told me 180 purchased video games. And now I'm going to cross multiply to solve this. 10 times 180 is 1800. And then three times X is three X. And then I would divide by three and 1800 divided by three is 600. So we would expect that 600 people visited the store.